Hello everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another career mode episode and welcome then to the series finale. Today is the day we play our two finals that we have left to complete our quadruple of course. The first one, an FA Cup final against Liverpool in a Merseyside derby. Following that, a Champions League final against Manchester City. So yeah, some good stuff to look forward to today. I'm going to be showing you as well the Premier League team of the year because we've only got one player in that. And then we'll round up pretty much the entire series. So it might be a bit of a longer episode today. Of course, two finals, plus us looking through our stats and all that kind of thing to come. Um, and then tomorrow, I believe, you'll have the goal of the series, um, which is basically the best goal as voted for by you of the last five seasons, plus one that I'll throw in from this season, which is my favourite, because I don't think we've got enough time to be able to make two of those in order to have, like, the winner of season six. So... Stick around for that as well tomorrow. Um, we have got the poll to decide on as well for our FIFA 20 career mode, which will drop this Thursday, hopefully through EA Access. Um, I've, man I've managed to come to two teams that I really, really like the look of and want to try out Mahanda uh, in FIFA 20. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys to decide which of those two we do pick. So make sure you have, uh, you have subscriptions turned on and all that good stuff so you can make sure you don't miss that video. For now, though, let's take a quick look at the Premier League team of the competition so we can have a look at that. And then we'll get ourselves into our first final against Liverpool. So the only player that makes it in the team of the year for us is actually Kieran Tierney, our captain, of course, at left back. He's been a mainstay in this Everton side for me. And there he is on your screen. Kepa's in there. Pags, Lejeune of Newcastle, Lindsay of Chelsea, uh, Lamprey of West Brom, Ali, Eriksen, Dembele, Kane and Jesus as well make up that. Kane won the golden boot and the player of the competition as well. And the goalkeeper of the tournament went to Kepa, who made it into the team of the year also. So in terms of our final standings for the Premier League, because I went ahead and I simmed the rest of the games that we had to play. Um, we got one win, I think, in our last three or something like that. So it wasn't fantastic. But final standings looked like that. Chelsea finished second, United finishing third and West Ham finishing in fourth. Liverpool down there in eighth place, a poor season for them. Arsenal all the way down in 16th escaping relegation by five points, which is a little bit ridiculous, but at least they escaped the relegation. So other than that, I've not really got too much else to show you. And I think it's about time we head off into our first final of the day. Two finals in one day. Um, hopefully, we're going to have two wins in these finals um, because I want to start off the right way, keep this um, atmosphere and keep sort of morale high by beating Liverpool in the FA Cup. You may remember as well, I did say to you guys that we've had the better of these two teams that we're going to face today pretty much every time. So today could be the first time that they actually get the better of us. I'm hoping that I'm wrong, but you never know. And because we've only got these two games in today's episode, I'm going to be playing the FA Cup final at seven minutes a half and then the Champions League final at eight minutes a half. So effectively longer in the two games, but um, yeah, we should get to see some good stuff. And we're at Wembley as well. I'm going to show you the stats, uh, the uh, settings and everything just to go through them before we head into game. Um, I actually can't believe that we're, we're so close now to FIFA 20. It seems ridiculous because, like, I don't know. It just feels weird to think that it's days away um, rather than weeks and months now. Uh, but nevertheless, let's head off into our first game. That is our 11. I'll speak a bit more about it when we are in there. And let's see what Liverpool are going to throw out against us. What a way to end off a series. A Merseyside derby in an FA Cup final. Of course, this isn't the only game we've got coming for you as well today. But um, there's been some pretty good Merseyside derbies in our series thus far, but this is possibly the biggest one, isn't there? I mean, in fact, actually, we played them in a uh, Europa Super Cup, didn't we? Because they won the uh, Europa League. So I don't know, actually, if it is the biggest, but it's certainly up there. And for the second time, we played a Merseyside derby in, in a cup competition final. So that's pretty cool as well. And Bappe there, you can see, definitely one of our better players. If I remember rightly as well, Liverpool have actually got a pretty decent team. So, yeah, it's not going to be an easy game. Alisson in goal, Bustos, Van Dijk, Kimpembe and Robertson at the back. Fabinho, Benton, Kerr, Pena and Oyazabal with Woodburn just in behind Mauro Icardi. I did tell you, they've got a good team, Liverpool. Uh, they're not a bad side by any means. Um, even if their Premier League position suggests otherwise because they've not had a great year. But I'm sure they'll want to win it with a cup. Even more so the fact it's against Everton. For us, Lunan will start in goal. Cancelo, Delic, Sanchez and uh, Kieran Tierney, of course, at left back, as I can now tell you that as it's popped up on the screen. Dybala, Lo Celso and Orsic in a midfield three. Leon Bay, Vinicius Jr. and Kylian Mbappe as our front three. And the substitution bench is just surreal as to how good it actually is. So, yeah, lots of quality bring on as well. Lo Celso 
Dybala finds the ball through to Vinicius Jr. Fantastic play. Nowhere to go, though, so we'll send it towards Tierney. Tierney gets inside the Liverpool penalty area. Goes down under the challenge, and Bustos has been penalised here. And it's a penalty kick to Everton after 10 minutes. It's a very, very harsh penalty, I will say. Tierney maybe has bought this. But the question is, has he actually got round Bustos? I mean, there's not a great challenge on the ball, is there? He does kind of just go to stop the run of Tierney. There's not a massive amount in it. But there's a penalty kick inside 10 minutes for us to take the lead. Do I give it to Mbappe? Ah, oh, Dybala's actually got the best penalty kicks. Hmm. I haven't missed a penalty in quite some time. Dybala going to step up with the left foot up against Alisson. And he doesn't miss. Dybala strikes first in an FA Cup final. That will be surrounded by controversy over the decision to award the penalty kick. Because there wasn't a much, there wasn't a right lot of contact, to be fair. And Tierney maybe buys it, but Dybala takes it and scores it. Alisson was about to go to his right, and he went to his left instead. Tierney up towards Vinicius Jr. Good little turn. Tierney's continued. He's causing Bustos no ends of problems. As Tierney again now in Liverpool's penalty area. Let's it go. And Virgil van Dijk steps in and blocks it. Liverpool with a big ass now then to not allow us to go two in front. Because I feel like the, uh, the final will be away from them. If they do allow that to happen. Tierney again striding forward. Now Dybala towards Orsic. Towards Mbappe. Great turn. Off the post. He's bounced back out. Offside flag will go up. And the Celso will not get his goal. Mbappe with a fantastic little turn in the box. And he strikes the woodwork. He was onside. That wasn't the problem. It's that there. You can see La Celso massively offside. And the goal will not stand. Lifeline for Liverpool, as it could have been 2-0. Leon Bay through to Cancelo. Cancelo pulling it in towards the box. Mbappe, great touch, and Alisson makes the save. I mean, we have to finish that off, don't we? We have to finish that. That's just unacceptable. They haven't scored there. We've put Liverpool under an immense amount of pressure in this first half. We only have the one goal to show for it so far as well, though. And you, get, you don't get chances like that too often in a final as Liverpool will now come forward. Great ball through. Tierney, though, does defensive work brilliantly. He's had a lot of the ball in advanced areas today, but he's just as good defensively when we need him to be. Orsic now in possession as he has a counter-attack on here. Look at this. Liverpool stretched. Ball through to Mbappe. I believe the offside flag might go up. No, he doesn't. Mbappe. Alisson again is there. I thought the offside flag was coming and it never did. And Mbappe again will waste another good chance. Half-time whistle about to be upon us. We've got seconds left in this half as Vinicius Jr. turning. Tierney made a great run, but we will not get time to play the ball. And at half-time, we do lead, but it is only 1-0. And whatever it's 1-0, Liverpool will still have a chance to come back into this game. we would had numerous chances to find that second, have not taken them. Is it time to maybe consider a couple of substitutions? Can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm going to be bringing off Mbappe because it's really not been his day thus far. Let's bring on Patrick Atron and Patrick as well. Van Leuven, that is, for Dybala. So two changes. Dybala and Mbappe off are two highest rated players. They've not had their best games in an Everton shirt. And on comes Patrick, a series hero, and uh, Catron as well. Can they be the ones to find us this second goal as the second half is underway? Brilliant work from us here as we play our way out of defence really well. Orsic trying to flick that on. Luckily, we still get away with the touch. Now Tierney striding forward. Tierney! It would have been great for him to score it, but he has not done. Lo Celso, now to Patrick Catron. The chance is still with us, though. There's the ball through to Tierney again as he's inside the box, this time looking to pull it back, and it's a good defensive block. <sighs> Another chance. Leon Bailey with a corner here, going to swing it in, and hopefully we are going to win this header. We do win the header. Off the bar it goes. It's Patrick as well who has the effort. He's on it again here. Can he find the shot? He can. Deflected, and it's worked its way into the bottom corner. Liverpool nil, Everton 2, and it's that man there, the series hero. I don't think he's going to be credited with it because there's a huge deflection here that takes it into the back of the net, but he might if it's on target. Yeah, it's Fabinho, it's Fabinho's touch that's taken it into the bottom corner. The question is, is it on target from Patrick? Will he be credited with it? I honestly don't care because it's that second goal I was looking for, and that man there... Wrote his name into the history books of the Hrafshap. Wrote his name into the history books of Villarreal. Can you consider him into the history books of Everton as well? And Patrick was actually given that goal as well. So it is his. He has been credited as we get through again. Leon Bay, poor touch. No, 
was just a little bit too much. On the first touch from Leon Bay as Alisson comes out to make another good save. That would have surely have done it for this final. As we get an opportunity to put the cross in from Leon Bay himself. Alisson will punch it away only as far as Orsic. Waits for the ball to come and that's a little bit of a risk there. Because if you wait for it, there's a chance he might have been tackled. But TNE instead finds Lo Celso. Now to Patrick. Cancelo making a good run. Patrick instead to Leon Bay. There's number three. He scored one and now he's assisted one. Game set and match. We are going to be FA Cup champions. Give me that treble. Orsic has seen the run coming in from Catron as he's in. Looking for number four. And Patrick Catron makes it four. Liverpool are getting dismantled in this FA Cup final. Hardly surprising with the team that we have. I mean, you can bring on Patrick Catron and Patrick Van Leuven off the bench. You know you're in for a rough day at the office as the opponents. Catron, look at the run from Orsic. Orsic for number five as he passes it into the bottom corner. I think it's safe to say it's not going to happen for Liverpool. They've been trying to throw some more bodies forward, get themselves back in it. And there's been quite a few times where we've counter-attacked and I haven't shown you them because they've just like fizzled up to nothing, but really have been dangerous ones up until our final pass or, or whatnot. Um, but this one was good enough to find the bottom corner from Orsic. And it's been coming that, the fifth goal. Bit of an embarrassing scoreline for Liverpool, of course. It's a good job this is FIFA. Um, otherwise, people would be very, very annoyed. But... Orsic makes it five. It was never in doubt here. And now we're going to have to move on and play against Manchester City in the Champions League final. Liverpool haven't beaten us since we took over at Everton. And they will not end that curse, I guess, um, by beating us in this final. Let's see if Manchester City can do that because I don't think they've beaten us either since we've taken over at Everton. Seconds remain here then as Benton Kerr for Liverpool. And all I'm doing is waiting for this final whistle for Bigno Benton Kerr. Shot coming in. Tierney and Sanchez both put their bodies on the line to defend it. And that's going to do us here from Wembley. We will be FA Cup champions. Step one of two completed. Let's enjoy this moment, but not too much. Because we've still got one more game to play. And it's the biggest game in club football. Mbappe and myself sat alongside the FA Cup trophy. Hopefully, in a few moments, we will have a Champions League trophy that we're sat alongside as well. Manchester City, it will be in the final for us. That is going to be our last ever game of this series. As I'm trying so hard, by the way, to get Orsic up to a 90-rated player. He's currently 89, and I think he's just under halfway over to that 90-rated. So, maybe we'll see it by the end of this one. I don't think we will. But, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to think about that, isn't it? Like, him and Patrick, both in our midfield. As you can see, there it is. He's, uh, he's going six overalls. He's 74 million now, he's worth. So, that's pretty ridiculous. But I'm going to swap on my team for the Champions League final. I'm obviously going to be starting Patrick. So, he's going to come in for Dybala. I think I have to start Orsic. Lo is going to come out. Alexander Anna will come in. Um, and I'm going to then do the rest of it off camera. I'll be back in a second. This is it. The final game of our series is here. 
We're playing at the Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid for the Champions League final. As promised, eight minutes. Of course, I'll take you through the settings again so you can see them in its full. And this is going to be it. After this game, there'll be no more in the series. We will either have achieved our goal of the quadruple or we will only have the treble, which is still pretty good, but I, I want it all. I want the quadruple. And if you count the other trophies, of course, that we've won as well, it's even more than that. We've got 90 minutes, potentially, plus extra time and maybe even penalties to settle this. And if history's anything to go by, we should get the better of Manchester City, but it is a final. So we'll see if they step up. Liverpool couldn't. Can Man City do it? Two teams are on their way out for the biggest prize in club football. It is right there. We're no strangers to it. We hold it after last season. Can we retain it? That's the question. Pep Guardiola's team is on the screen right here. The substitutes bench, you can see. We are no strangers to this 11. We know all about it. As again, though, Asensio on the bench. Foden at this stage is one of the best midfielders in the world. Got Bernardo Silva in there as well alongside him. I mean, it's an incredible City team, just as it's an incredible Everton team. So, uh, yeah, if this is a uh, Champions League final, hopefully it's going to be one that's going to be very competitive and not just us running rings around Manchester City, which we ran rings around Liverpool. In fact, we've run rings around pretty much every single team we've played so far this season when it's mattered. So, can Manchester City be the ones to break that in our final game of the series? For us, here it is, our 11. Um, a couple of players may be a little bit unfortunate to miss out. Vinicius Jr., La Celso, but that is what we've done. Alexander Arnold comes into midfield alongside Orsic and Patrick. We had to start him in our final game. Coming in on the left alongside Leon Bay and Mbappe up front. Hoping for a better performance tonight from killing Mbappe than what we saw in the FA Cup final. Catron came on and did really well. So if it's anything to go by, we might be able to, uh, to bring him on again if we need to. So looking at you, Mbappe, you're going to have to show me why I've put my faith in you. Tierney will find Orsic immediately as we look to get through. Leon Bay, he's in. Leon Bay scores. It's as easy as that, my friends. Three minutes into this one. And Leon Bay strikes in the Champions League final. And I have to give credit again to Kieran Tierney because it's yet again this guy who starts the move off. The ball's played out to him on this left-hand side from Alexander-Arnold. He plays it inside to Orsic. And our Croatian maestro... Picks out the pass to Leon Bailey, who strikes it off the underside of the crossbar and it nestles in the back of the net. Well, I've said it before, the best team in the world of football. I mean, there's no stopping us. There really isn't. Orsic towards Mbappe, finds Coman. Coman just about squeezes it through again for Orsic, who's now going to send the cross in quite deep. It's headed out, but Coman has the chance now to bring it under control. Instead, goes for the audacious. I don't believe what I've just seen. Kingsley Coman with one of the best goals in the Champions League final I've ever seen. That is insane from Kingsley Coman. I'm going to be honest, since we scored that opening goal so early on, Man City with most of the possession since then, but we don't need a lot of the ball if that's what we can do. What a goal. I'm honestly stunned. The flick over the head from Coman. I meant to do that, but I thought he was going to hit it on the volley. Like just a normal volley, not a bicycle kick. My friends, I think we have the goal of the season for season number six. That's going to make it into that goal of the series poll. that will probably come in for you tomorrow. That is insane from Kingsley Coman. And if we now don't win the Champions League following on from that goal, we're not worthy. What a goal from Kingsley Coman. As he's going to get that ball quite luckily here again though. Leon Bay doesn't come away with possession. I, I can't believe he's just scored that. Oh, we're a stretch a little bit here as Sterling has got the run from Jesus. Instead, tries to go himself. Alexander Arnold to Jesus. Good save, Lunan. Just before we hit the 45th minute mark. And Lunan's made a fantastic left-handed save. That was going in from Jesus. That was going in. What a save. That could have been 2-1, pulling Manchester City potentially back into it. The danger is not averted yet, though, as the corner swung in. And there's the goal I was saying. Gomez has got it. Everton 2, Manchester City 1 with a minute and a half to go until half-time. Danger wasn't averted. He might have made a good save, but we still had some defending to do and we don't do it. I'm not quite sure who's even marking him here. Um, Gomez gets up for it. Uh, I think it might be Alexander-Arnold who's beaten in the air by him. And uh, City with a way back into this one then. This game is not done yet. 
even with Coman's wonder goal. As Coman will carry forward straight from kickoff, Mbappe. Coman's going to make the run through. Poor pass from Mbappe. And that's going to do it. We should be in a half time then. Sanchez wins that flick on. Mbappe again to Leon Bay. Looking for one more chance in this first half. Leon Bay gets it deflected. Corner ball. Last chance saloon in the first half. Coman to swing it in. There is delivery. Sanchez gets up. It's a weak header. I'm going to half time 2 1. Coman sends that to Mbappe. Gets it back from him as well. Nicely done by those two. Kingsley Coman. Look at this right hand side where Cancelo is for number three for Everton. And Edison saves it. Cancelo at the vital time couldn't finish it. Oh, man. Sane was recovering pretty well, though, so that kind of put a little bit of pressure on uh, Cancelo. Maybe put him off slightly as we get a corner instead, but really, it should have been the goal. Sanchez's header! It is the goal! It's 3-1 Everton. Davison Sanchez with the header. And that's what we needed. <laughs> Cancelo might have missed the first chance, but Sanchez has given us that third goal then. I can now rest a little bit easier after worrying about that missed chance. I mean, Edison doesn't even move because he's thinking to himself, please go out, please don't nestle in that top corner. That's exactly what it's done. Gomez got Man City back into this game with a good header. Sanchez might have just put them back out of it with one. Not great work from us defensively as Grimaldo gets the short corner. Patrick just trying to watch his every move and he wins back the ball. Is there a counter-attacking option on for us? Vinicius Jr. out towards Coman. Doesn't quite get possession, but Alexander Arnold will feed Lo Celso. Lo Celso's ball for Mbappe. Looking for number four. Killing Mbappe to finish it off. And Edison gets a touch, but it's not enough. City one, Everton four. It's an unbelievable counter-attack. And I think that's done it. 23 minutes to go. We can now rest assured that I think we're Champions League winners again. It's a devastating counter-attack. It really, really is. The pace we move the ball at, the pace we have up front. If you get caught napping, you're going to get a goal against you. Edison just doesn't quite have enough to push that out over the bar. Instead, it nestles in that top corner. And Mbappe, I think, seals our Champions League winner's medal. Delict. What a switch of play that is to Tierney. City beginning to get a little bit stretched at the wide areas. Vinicius Jr. to Patrick. Finish it off, Patrick. Get yourself a goal. He's done just that. It's 5-1 Everton. I'm so glad he has scored as well. It's only fitting that in our final game, he would grab a goal. City getting far too stretched now in the wide areas because they're so behind that they're having to try and work an opportunity. And they're just, they're just not quick enough getting back. Patrick, what a finish this is. Right into the top corner, even if Edison wanted to save. Oh, actually, he does get a touch now, actually. Maybe should have saved it, but I don't care. City 1, Everton 5. This is probably the best team we have seen on my channel before. We're about to enter added time now as we see this one out. Tierney driving forward again, pulling it back. Lacelso. that should have been six. It was hit at pace, but I still feel he could have um, he could have brought that under control, but unfortunately not. My friends, I've got no words to describe how good this team has been other than it's probably the most dominant team in the world of football at this current time. And as we count down the clock to end off this series, it's been unbelievable to record. I'll speak more about it when we do the, uh, the round up, but I want to say it's been a blast. We have 50 seconds left of this Champions League final and we will have done the quadruple that I set out to do. Let's just watch this clock play down as the referee will end off the game as soon as we win back possession. Vinicius Jr. trying to do it and there it is, my friends. For the final time, we will watch our team lift another trophy.
have it then. We've ended off the series winning the quadruple, doing exactly what we set out to do at the beginning of the season. 5-1 victors in the Champions League final. It's incredible. Manchester City not quite good enough. But before we jump into kind of ending off the series by taking it season by season and having an in-depth look, I thought we'd take a quick look at how our former clubs have got on. Now, one of them have gone on to win the Europa League. And I'm not sure how the other one has done in their respective leagues. So, you might remember that um, the Europa League consisted of a semi-final tie between Villarreal and Der Hrafschap, who are both our former clubs, of course. Well, it ended up being a 5-4 aggregate victory for Villarreal. They won the semi-final. They then went on to play RB Leipzig in the final and managed to win that. So... We do have a former club of ours who have won a European competition. Obviously, if we were to move into next season, we would face them in the Europa Super Cup, which would be quite interesting indeed. I'm just a bit sad, though, to see De Hrafschap getting so close. Like, look at that. 5-4 it finished on aggregate. It's incredible. Um, we'll take a quick look at the their own leagues and see how they've done over there because, of course, um, they might have, uh, have got some some trophies in the league. So first up, we'll go to uh, the Eredivisie because that's the first one that's appearing. And they finished third, De Hrafschap. Um, they finished 15 points behind PSV, but they still got into European football, which is good to see, of course. They've managed to, I think, getting European football every single season that we've left. So yeah, credit to them. Um, and for La Liga, Villarreal finished in seventh which isn't very good considering the uh, the fact they've got a pretty decent squad. Of course, they've lost a couple of big players along the line. They've lost the likes of Pags. Um, I'm not sure if Jovic is still there either. So I'll take a quick look as well at their teams before I go into the in-depth part of looking by season se uh, uh, season by season. So that's not what I wanted to do because that's the full list of Eredivisie players. I want only De Hrafschaps and there they are then. So what is their team looking like? Bosch is still there. Chong is still there. That's good to see. Um, Bosch now 86 rated as well. Remember, we bought him from PSG. In midfield, Serge Gnabry is still at the club. Milivojevic is still there. Ravel Morrison is still there. One of my favourite players of this series that we had. Um, Javier Vett still there in defence. I'm not really sure if we had like an out-and-out an out unbelievable defender. Beats are still there. Tadebo is still there. Van der Pavert. So, yeah. And then in goal, Onana is still there. Um, and De Vrij alongside him. So, no Zoet. No Zoet in that team. He must have gone. So, yeah, not a lot of players still there from when we took over and had them, which is quite sad, really, because I would have loved to have, for them to have kept hold of their big players and maybe mounted another push for another league title after we left. In terms of Villarreal, who is still there from when we were there, it probably would be pretty similar because it's, it's only two seasons since we left them. Um, Jovic is still at the club, now 90 rated, so he's still there. Pion Sisto is still there as well. Remember, I brought him back from Arsenal. Theo Fanus, uh, Daniel de Groot is still at the club as well, of course. Um, 85 rated now. We took him from De Hrafschap. In midfield, Chukweze is still at the club. Lazidis is still there. Jao Jordan, or Young Jordan, I should say. Arnie Mayer joined, but that was after I'd left. Paredes is at the club. Yeah, so uh, a few changes. Donny van der Beek there as well. Uh, not that many changes to the team that we honestly left them with, which is quite good to see as well. Skriniar still there in goal, Blanco, and that is it. So that's it for the two teams, of course, that we left behind. Let's take a look at our team as we end off with Everton. So in goal, Lunen, 88 rated, played 35 times as we move down the list. We don't really have to take a look at any of the goalkeepers. AWB was good last season, played 24 times for us this year. Cancelo and Alexander-Arnold both playing 48 games apiece as well. Good to see them, of course. Alexander-Arnold in more of a uh, midfield role rather than full-back. As we move down, De Ligt in there. Lindelof, Pazala, Holgate, uh, Davison Sanchez. So you can see we had an incredible backline. Kieran Tierney, 64 appearances for us in this season. I'm pretty sure he will be the highest assist... Ma uh, sorry, highest appearance maker in our team. So... We'll check that in a minute. As we scroll down again, we've got Patrick, 15 goals, 11 assists to his name this season as well. He just seems to always pop up with huge numbers. Orsic in there too with 49 appearances. Lo Celso playing 51 times. Leon Bay 49. Kingsley Coman 48. Bay scoring 26 and getting 20 assists as well. 
in uh, in those 49 games is pretty ridiculous. Coleman with 21 goals. Dybala came in in January. Mason Mount played numerous uh, appearances for us. Mbappe as well. Ivan Herrera, Patrick Catrone, Vinicius Jr. So, our top assist, uh, sorry, our top appearance maker, Kieran Tierney, was 64, 13 higher than any other player. Our highest goal scorer shared between Leon Bay and Vinicius Jr. Assist wise went to Vinicius Jr. And clean sheets, of course, will have gone. Kieran Tierney gets the most clean sheets. Huh. Lunan with only 13. I mean, he did only play 35. But yeah, that's incredible. So we're going to take it season by season to have a look at what we did in uh, in each season and go through it. So, of course, we started this journey way back with De Rafshap, where we were expected to avoid finishing in the bottom part of the league and reaching the quarterfinal of the Domestic Cup. Um, we were able, I believe, to finish third in this season. Our biggest transfer, and watch as this goes up in, uh, in year by year, was Gibbs White. £2.3 million he paid for him, letting Klassen go for £840,000. We were... Okay, this year didn't win a trophy, but we definitely overachieved in any sort of way we were going to do. Got into Europe as well, and that was a good first season to kind of build upon. Straight after this year, though, we went and did what we had to do, which was winning the league by finishing first. And uh, we also won the domestic cup as well by winning, I believe, was it against PSV? I think. Um, we reached the round of 16 in the Europa League, didn't quite make it to the final, but we got into the round of 16, which is fine. Um, our biggest outlay this season, 3.5 million for ARP, 820,000 we let go of Van Meegen. But we played a lot more games this season, again, with a good win rate. And I guess this is the season where I felt like all our hard work in that first season paid off. You know, we won our first trophy in the Eredivisie. We won our second trophy winning the uh, Domestic Cup. We were competitive in Europe, and I felt like we were going to make things happen. And also, I think this is the season where... At the end of it, Ravel Morrison joined us ahead of this season right here. So, I could have been wrong. He could have joined us in the first year, actually. Um, but anyways, 2021 was this season here where we would unbelievably win the Champions League against Real Madrid. Nobody gave us a shot and we went and did it. The domestic treble, sorry, double, and then the uh, the Champions League adding to that with a treble. £23 million we spent on Bosch. Letting Boadu go for £39 million. We only lost three games in this season. Incredible, incredible year. And this is the part where I, I said to myself, OK, we've done it. We, we've basically taken the Hrafshap to the unthinkable. So maybe we have to leave. And we decided that, that it was time to do that. So we went to Villarreal in Spain, where we would take over. And uh, we would then go into this season, which I believe is now a season ahead because of the way that it panned out. It kind of bugged out a little bit. So, following on from that, we went to Villarreal, we won ourselves a Europa League, we won ourselves at La Liga Santander, we lost to Barcelona in the Copa de España, and uh, yeah, didn't manage to quite do that, but we spent 65 million on Luka Jovic, and Zakaria went to Chelsea for 60 million. Again, came into this team and I knew exactly what we had to do, and having won that, I said, okay, well, next season might be the last year, and it wasn't, because we stayed for another season on top of this, where we took over at Everton, of course, this being last season in game, and we won the league, we won the Champions League, and we basically just just did what we had to do. Um, came in, managed to take Everton to what they had been looking for. They were they were trying to push for it. They were in the top four. They really were mounting a push, but they just needed us to come in and get them that extra little bit to take them to the Premier League title and the Champions League. And of course, that takes us to this season where we have just done the quadruple. Mbappe smashing our transfer record for £144 million nearly. And Akaku, we let him go for 105 to Real Madrid. So, incredible, incredible season that we've just seen. Overall then, it brings us to this. Three clubs, five league titles, four domestic cups, four continental cups to our name in this series. Our biggest win coming as recent as the Carabao Cup final against Chelsea. An 8-2 victory. Our biggest defeat against PAOK um, in our Europa League. I believe first season with the Krafschap. Um, record transfer fee of 143 million for Mbappe. An overall record of 346 games, 251 wins, 63 draws and 32 losses along the way. And that's it, my friends. We are now at the end of the series. It's been an absolute blast to record from starting with the Krafschap having... That first season where we overachieved to us getting Zardes and Ravel Morrison in and them tearing apart the Eredivisie to going on and 
competing in the Champions League, not only competing, but going on to beat Real Madrid in the final. I remember that game. It was incredible. I could not believe what I was seeing when we did that. Of course, joining Villarreal, splashing the cash, being able to win the, uh, the La Liga and, of course, the Europa League to come into Everton, building arguably the best side the Premier League may have ever seen and uh, really dominating in every sort of aspect that we went for to us now finishing off the series. Um, I know this series didn't do as well maybe in terms of views, but it was definitely one of my more favourite series to record this year in FIFA. And hopefully we'll have a blast as much as I did um, by, by FIFA 20 dropping and uh, we'll have a great series there as well. Genuinely, I can't wait to see who you guys choose for our FIFA 20 journey when I uh, do upload that video. It's going to be very interesting to see. But I just want to say a massive thank you if you've watched this series, supported this series by hitting a like or anything like that. I really do appreciate that as well. Like I said, um, it wasn't the best series in terms of views on my channel, but it certainly was one of my more favourite ones to record. So if you've enjoyed any episode along the way, um, and you've taken time out of your day to watch it, then a massive thank you if I've helped you in any way by giving you the entertainment. That's great to see and, and great to think about. And hopefully I can do more of the same in FIFA 20. But for now, guys, signing off this, uh, this series for one last time. I will have one more video coming your way to do with this series, which will be the goal of the series poll, where we take the winners of each season's goal of the season, put them in this one, throw them in with that Kingsley Coleman strike in the Champions League final, and you guys have your say on which goal was your favourite from the series. But for now, this will be the last time I give you this series. It's been a blast. And I'll see you all for that vote for our FIFA 20 series very, very soon. Until then, have a great evening. And I'll see you all soon. Adios.